A strong geomagnetic storm could be lighting up the night sky over the next few days. Something called a cannibal coronal mass ejection is set to give those lucky enough to have clear skies a chance to catch the most spectacular northern light spectacle since May. Joining me now is Dan Riskin, CTV science and technology expert. Dan, thanks as always for joining us. Pleasure. I always love to talk about coronal mass ejections. It's like my favorite thing this year. I'm not even sure it's legal here. But uh, <laughs> we are having a great year for Northern Lights, are we? We are because of coronal mass ejections. So they are very much legal. Uh, and so what it is, the, the sun has a corona. And the corona sometimes ejects mass. So that's a coronal mass ejection. Makes sense. And as you said off the top there, this might be a cannibal coronal mass ejection, which is when you have one coronal mass ejection that comes off and then a second one comes off after it and catches up with it and sort of becomes this larger front. And back in May, we had these spectacular northern lights uh, that, that really just lit up the night sky. They were considered a G5, which is the highest rating we can get. Um, and that, again, was some of this cannibal coronal mass ejection stuff. Now, what we're predicting for tonight and tomorrow night is more measured than what we saw before. This uh, is They aren't freaking out and, and uh, telling everybody to get out, to run north as quickly as possible to see this. But there's a very good chance we're going to see some good northern lights tonight. And so it's, you know, a, a bad northern light is still a pretty great night. So uh, and a, there's no indication this will be bad. Sometimes the the, uh, the predictions are off, so it's not guaranteed, but it's looking pretty good that if you go out tonight and have a look at the sky, you might see some northern lights. Hopefully. Well, we're in Toronto, so so far we've missed the eclipse and we missed the last time the northern <laughs> lights were here. Uh, which Canadians will get a chance to see this, or is it pretty much across the country? Well, it, so d brighter lights are easier to see than dimmer lights, and so you always do yourself a favor if you get out of you know get out of the city, drive uh, drive a little bit out into the countryside. Uh, you know, in some cities that's easier to do than others. Um, Toronto, it's it's an investment of time for sure, but if you live in Regina, you might have an easier time getting out into a field. So uh, those are the times where where living in a smaller place has a huge advantage. And if you can see the stars, you should be able to see the northern lights. So even in Toronto, you might see stuff. And I will say one of the things that happened with the Van with uh, the the May northern lights, I got some messages from people in Vancouver saying, "Oh, I missed it. I didn't get into the city. I didn't see it at all. Here's a picture I took from my patio." And the pictures were unreal. And I was like, <laughs> "How? Are you, what are you telling me that you missed it?" And they said, "Oh, the the phone makes it look better. So with an iPhone." And I'm sure the same is true of Android, but I haven't played with it. But with an iPhone, you can do this delayed exposure trick. And of course, if you have an SLR camera, you can do a delayed exposure. But if you can find a way to take a long exposure of the sky, northern lights that are so dim you can't quite see them might show up in your pictures. And so you might be able to put them in your social media feed and make everyone jealous as though you had seen them uh, without even actually seeing them yourself. All right. Is this an unusual year or are we just paying more attention this year? Uh, it's a great question. It is an unusual year. The, the sun goes through these 11 year cycles. So 11 years from now, we'll be having the same conversation. But five and a half <laughs> years from now, it'll be a lull. We won't be seeing anything. So the sun, for whatever reason, every 11 years uh, gets acne, for lack of a better word. It gets all these sunspots all over it. It's much like going through your its puberty or something like that. Um, and when it gets these sunspots, those things are these spots where the electrical field is all warped and weird. And they look small on the surface of the sun, but often they're bigger than our planet. And, and so they make these twisting magnetic fields that causes a ton of stuff to get ejected by the corona, which is a coronal mass ejection, and it comes towards Earth. And I will point out the reason they look like pretty lights in the sky is that we have a great magnetic field here on Earth that grabs those charged particles, sends them up towards the poles, and then brings them in, and they sort of burn up in the atmosphere. If we did not have a magnetic field, they would hit the surface of the Earth, and they would cause huge damage to organisms living there. So when you see those northern lights, make sure you take a moment to say thank you to Mother Earth for having a magnetic field and protecting you and turning it into a pretty show instead of, you know, ripping your flesh off and, and, and all the other horrible stuff that it would do if it got here. That's an exaggeration. It wouldn't rip your flesh off, <laughs> but it would be very bad for you. Those are positives. And be thankful the, uh, the sun isn't going through teen angst right now either. <laughs> I'm sure that's coming next. We'll I see. I don't want an angry sun. Dan, thank you as always, <laughs> sir. Thank you.